Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're working on a walk-in refrigerator and we're going to be updating the mechanical thermostat with a digital one. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. We are working inside of a walk-in refrigerator. It's currently 33 degrees in here, a bit cold. Right here is the mechanical thermostat that they have. We only have two wires. We're gonna be updating this with a digital control that we're gonna need to connect four wires and also program it. All right, while Christian is taking off that side cover, let's go over this control real quick. This is the Renko electronic temperature control. Specifically, this is the ETC111000. This is a single pole double throw control. Pretty interesting. Take off these four screws you get inside here. And it's pretty chilly in here. Not sure if you guys can see, but I can see my breath. So anytime you're working refrigeration, you better keep a hoodie in there, man. So real quick, we got a feature. They mentioned that everybody keeps messing around with the thermostat and things start getting crazy. There's a lock and unlock feature. So if you want to lock the keypad in this, in the front as we have a digital display if you want to lock this out you're going to switch this to the right oh, excuse me to the left if you want to unlock it switch it to the right so you can use it but we're going to program this later on and lock it so nobody touches it here we have our points of connections this one's going to be a little bit trickier in a regular thermostat we only have two wires over here if you guys look we only have two wires and it's a set of contacts so as a common and normally open right here we have common normally open and that's what we're gonna use but we're gonna have to run a jumper from common to the 120 so we have 120 volts there but then over here the common point we're gonna have to find a neutral wire inside there and run that in so we need 120 we need hot and neutral here we're going to jump over the 120 to common and then the other wire normally open is going to be the exiting wire of the hotline and that's what's going to energize and de-energize our solenoid valve we have multiple diagrams on how to wire this control but specifically we're going to be using this one right here and this is the exact setup that i'm going to be using i'm going to take a picture so you guys can see it and definitely leave a comment below if you'd like to, for me to go over this in a separate video i'm going to go into detail on the wiring and exactly how this works but this is a diagram we're going to be using all right so we got a bunch of wires in here and on the other side we should have the solenoid valve and the expansion valve this is a very complicated system. There's one condensing unit outside with two compressors. And what it does, it's like a small little rack system. So we have that split air cooled. And then it actually controls two walk-in boxes and like at least a dozen smaller refrigerators. So it's, it's quite the setup here. So there is a switch right here. So we gotta look at those tell you right now let's follow the green wire goes to ground this white wire is, is probably my neutral and this blue wire is probably my hotline let's see where is this coming from all right so we got this pink wire let's right let's follow okay the white goes up here it just labeled as F but this blue wire if we follow it it goes into here and then this line gets tapped in right here so this is gonna be our 120 the blue wires are hotline goes in and then it transfers to this pink reddish wire then comes in here this is just a switch here so this is going to be our 120, then this wire comes out, 
goes into this and I can see this wire right here goes in there probably goes into our solenoid valve and it comes back this wire to our neutral so this white is our neutral we figure this out now we can go ahead and get this started I understand what we need to do now this coil could use a little bit of love and has seen better days there's a switch right here let's turn it off all right guys let's get this show on the road all right so the red wire is the one that's coming from our power that's the main wire and then this one is going to be our comment on the on the new control and then this one is going to be the normally open contact that goes back to the solenoid oh these are ring connectors Open that up. And get the wires out of there. We're gonna have to run a jumper from this pink wire. Alright, we're gonna have to run a jumper from the pink wire to feed the 120 on the control. And then we have to add a wire and connect it to the neutral. So we got that out of the way. Alright, that's what we have. And then let's take off this control. Get that screw out of there. One quarter inch, one five sixteen. So we're gonna switch over. there keep in mind guys there is a sensing bulb here over here it's like a little cop copper line with the tube oh man look how they roll that up you can cut it but just keep in mind there's a little there's a little bit of gas inside there this is the sensor right here this bulb right here is copper so we're gonna have to pull that out I'd rather not breathe that in so I'll take the few minutes to untangle that. Alright, let's pull this through. Okay. Pull that through. Careful while I'm doing this. I don't unplug anything. Make sure we know where everything goes. If you want to take a picture, it's always a good idea. Take this one, hold it. Little by little, let's get this thing out of here. All right. Old control is out. You could just roll that up. I think it's whacked out. Cool. So we can use the same little knockout from the back, there's a knockout from the back and knockout from the bottom, depending on how you're gonna be installing this. I'm gonna go through the back, cause I'm gonna mount it right where the other control was, and then we're gonna run the sensor through here. The sensor on this one is a little wire, and you always want your sensor to be uh, behind the coil, um, specifically the return air. You never want it near the supply air. You always want your sensor in the, in the return air or somewhere within that vicinity. So as far as this, let's see. I'm gonna knock that out somehow. There we go. Punched it out. Now we got a hole there to run the wires. Let's start by mounting this. Let's mount this up. Let's drop a few screws in here and make sure it's straight. All right, I got the control mounted. The only thing is with this sensor, it comes out from the top. We're gonna have to run it neatly along the side and go through the bottom. Let's we'll start running our wires in. Right. Got this one guy that goes to our solenoid. And we got this one 
that is our main hot one. We're gonna need to make a jumper. We're gonna need to make a jumper and we're also gonna need to run the neutral. So let me get this set up. We're gonna run this in. Cut my wire. And we're gonna run that neutral through. All right. That. Then we're gonna make a jumper here and make this work. We made this a little, a little long. We got space to work with this. This is gonna be our jumper. These connections, you just loosen the screw and then you can put them in so we can cut this and we can cut this and then we can split. I mean, yeah strip these that one this one doesn't have that much space but i can get it done let's strip that one those are always annoying to cut that thick insulation okay that's that all right so i made my connections so originally we had the red wire and the black wire right for the other two ther for the other thermostat we have them right here there's three terminals here from the left is normally closed middle is normally open and on the right is common we put the red wire to common which is our 120 volts hotline coming in then the normally open contact was a second wire from the old thermostat and that goes into one side of our solenoid and the other side of the solenoid goes back to neutral but that's already wired next what i did is from this common wire which was our 120 volts i made a jumper and i connected it to here in the middle so from the left is 240 the middle is 120 and the right is common because we're using 120 volts here we're using 120 and common so the middle and the right if we were using 208 or 240 where we use the left and the right right 240 in common so i ran the jumper from the 120 to feed the 120 side and in the common on this side on the right i ran a wire right here let me get the light which is our neutral in that case i ran the wire to neutral i, I located the neutral here i tested it and that's what it is and that is how we wire this. Next, we have a sensor. We're gonna take off this little connector and we're gonna run it through the unit back to the other side and mount it at the return air. All right, there's the sensor going from the side, goes in there, got it neatly through here. And in the back, I kind of like tucked it around just because that little white holder was a bit thick for this little wire it was really to hold the bulb and i have it in a way where it's not going to touch metal as you can see the sensor is like touching the wire a bit just so it doesn't touch this cold surface but either way it should be okay but that should be good let's go ahead and put this face cover back on okay i currently have it in the unlock setting i'm going to put the cover on program it and once we have all our settings in i'm going to turn the power off and then safely put it on in the unlock in the lock mode and then we can just let it be just i don't want this thing live while i'm programming it and stuff like that makes no sense so we got this cover on let's put this back on turn the power on program it and then test it and then let it be all right so while i was programming it the video cut out but we're gonna start this over again right now the machine is working and once I programmed it, I heard the solenoid open. Fans are running all the time as long as it's power and it's cooling. As you can see, we have 42 degrees here. So we have a display, hopefully you guys can see it. And the way you program it, it's pretty much you're, you're setting the set point. You're gonna set if you're in heating or cooling because this can be used for heating or cooling operations. And you're gonna set a differential. So we're gonna click set, light came on. 
Let's click set again right there. F, there's an F, and there's arrows right here. Up, down, click up. C, F, we're using Fahrenheit. F is for Fahrenheit, C is for Celsius. So we're gonna set that, lock it in. S1 is gonna be our set point. So I'm thinking, I think it's, the only reason that we're changing this is because there's somebody in the building who always complains about the temperature and he can never trust this thing right here. So they want something with a digital display and something that's just a little bit more accurate because the other thermostat was whacked out. It was like set to 30 and we're only reaching about 40 in the box. So right here, S1 is blinking. We're gonna put our set point. For a refrigerator, you wanna be between 35 and 40 degrees. And you can see that I've been talking for too long. This thing just went, got locked in. So let's set again, Fahrenheit, set. I'm gonna put it at 36 degrees. I'm gonna click set. And then our differential, I'm thinking two, just so we don't have this thing constantly going on and off, on and off, on and off. So at 36 degrees, it's gonna maintain. Once it reaches up to 38, it's gonna kick in again. So we're gonna be ranging between there. So I'm gonna click set. Then we have C1, if you go on the other arrow, it has H1. So H is for heating, C is for cooling. We're gonna click set. D1, I'm gonna click set. And there we go. We have 41 degrees in the box system is currently running i heard the solenoid engaged the first time i programmed this and we're good to go i'm also going to leave a picture of how you actually do this what everything stands for the last step d1 is the cooling delay you can set it from 0 to 20 minutes let me make sure what i have that at d1 is at zero okay so at zero i don't want no delay so as soon as it hits that two degree differential it's gonna kick on right away i'm not trying to wait and we're gonna maintain 36 to 38 degrees we should be good and yeah that's the way you do it that's a beautiful thing i'm gonna turn off the power and now we can lock that thermostat honestly it gets so cold in here I don't want this thing to freeze up either. Maybe I'll set the box to 37 degrees with a one degree differential. You can mess around with that, but it's up to you. But now you guys know how it's actually done. I'm thinking to do the 37 with the one degree differential and let it just like main maintain that temperature. I'm gonna lock it and close this up ready to go let's just finish up this testing all right guys everything's looking good power is back on 41 degrees in the box i changed the setting to 37 degrees with a one degree differential they should be fine so it's pretty much just gonna open and close that solenoid and that one condensing unit just runs off a timer outside and it is what it is as far as now we're just gonna give it some time and just wait for it to satisfy, make sure that solenoid closes, but it definitely opened it. I believe in this control. It's a solid, good control, and they're actually everywhere. So it's important to know how to install one of these and test one of these. So stick around, and I'm gonna be posting more videos on this control. I wanna do an in-depth close, close up on how to wire this and everything like that. If it was a little bit tricky for you to guys to understand in this video, I'm also gonna make a video on how to test it and all those things. And Maybe just a quick video on just quickly how to test this, excuse me, how to program this thing in a separate video just so you guys can always come back for reference. But yeah, we're just going to wait for this to cool down. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap it up here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.